So uh, have you guys uh, tried to do uh, this one, number one? Some of them should be easy, right? I'm pretty sure uh, number one to number five should be easy, right? Any question here from number one to number five? It's pretty much exactly what you have here, right? You have here and you find the answer on your uh, left side, right? Hopefully uh, you guys did that. And the other ones, it's a little bit like, you know, you kind of have, the answer is that you kind of have to like figure out, uh, for example, here, it says, uh, man, uh, this one, I'm looking at this one. I'm just gonna do maybe one, unless you have any questions. Man, fil gurfa, huh? What is gonna be, fil gurfa tu, no. Fil gurfati. So man fil gurfati means man is what? Who? Remember, we did this from lesson one or terminal, I don't remember. Man is who? And ma, huh? ma is what? And as you saw here, you can also use a mada for what? In number one, can I write here ala sarir? Let me see. Number one. Uh, you wrote here. You're talking about this one, right? This number one, number one, uh, Aina al Kitabu. So, okay. Yeah, you can, okay. If you want to, a few things. Number one, uh, you, there's two issues with this, your answer. <clears throat> number one, I just want to make sure that uh, you understand that uh, this exercise actually, they, it's kind of like, you know, a very silly reading comprehension, meaning like they actually want you to answer based on this text, right? So that means they want you to make sure that you understand the text and then you are answering from the text, right? So uh, if in the text, it didn't say that the, uh, the, the, the book, uh, Al-Kitab, is on the desk, uh, on the bed, sorry, maybe you don't want to say, you know, I, I mean, you might be right from the, you know, grammar and everything, I mean, meaning perspective, but that's uh, the point number one. Point number two is something that you mentioned. I feel a little bit guilt because I didn't explain it too well because I'm just keep on leaving this uh, feminine thing for chapter six. Because if I start talking about the whole feminine thing here and Tamar Buddha, subhanallah, you guys will, uh, will I'm going to end up, I'm afraid that I'm going to end up doing chapter six right now. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to avoid this talk. So bottom line, what you need to know for now, when you have the word Al-Kitab, for example, you have the word Al-Kitab, right? And it doesn't have Tamar Buddha. Let's just put it this way. If you have a word with Tamar Buddha right now, this is just for right now, then you want to word here for pronoun. Any, any female person uh, or like Amina is a female, right? And anything that has Tamar Buddha. For right now, even Amina has Tamar Buddha, right? So think about if you have this Tamar Buddha and you want to use the pronoun for that thing or person, even you have to use the pronoun here. Okay, maybe I should make this, as I said, uh, this topic will come, believe it or not, in big, big way. So uh, you can say, um, uh, female plus a uh, word with Tamar Bhutta, right? Uh, not the sm smiley clown face, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, Tamar Bhutta gets here for pronoun, okay? This is loosely I'm explaining right now, just so that you can, uh, you can, you know, go through this chapter and next chapter because uh, they are start, they started using the here pronoun, right? You understand? So right now, so that means, because in English uh, we have it, right? It is on the bed, if you want to say it, but in Arabic, we don't have the word it. So what do you do, right? We have to use one of those pronouns and which one do you use? The rule that I just gave you. So Al-Kitab, does it have Tamar Buddha? No, right? So we cannot use the Hua, I said here. So what do we have to use? So what do you think? What, what do we have to use? Instead of here, what pronoun would you use here? Even let's you want to say it, uh, it is on the bed. You want, to, you're going to say here Alal Sari? No, you can say what? Hua, right? Hua ala. Yes, yes, well, that's it. Well, now, uh, ju just uh, what I was explaining to you, uh, because if they kind of want the reading comprehension, uh, so you want to say Al Kitabu Al Al Maktab. Okay, so Al Al Maktab. But, uh, 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 yeah, but you would be, uh, uh, you would be uh, right 
from you know meaning perspective but except the grammar you just have to change but here as you said let me see here yes, i see the i good uh, so that means i have to say al makta b okay something uh so any other question from here so uh, i was just going through here uh which one which one i was doing so man so man is who right man fil ghurfati right so uh it's a little bit uh it's not that hard to find out so fi first find out you can look in the left column it says here who are fil ghurfati only thing you have to understand who is that who are huh? how do you know who is the who are? you go back here and you see muhammad Okay, so it's a little bit uh, <clears throat> going the other way from from the uh, we usually go from noun to pronoun, and here you just have to go from pronoun to noun. So instead of saying "hua fil gurfati," you are going to say "Muhammad, Muhammadun fil gurfati." Right? Anyone else? Uh, uh, everybody else kind of understood and at least made an attempt to do this. You know, I just uh, because we have one week at class, and uh, uh, escaping or skipping uh, this exercise probably not the best thing to do. So even though they, uh, you know, okay. So any question from uh, uh, this one, uh, number two should be easy, right? Or I don't know which one, which one else I give you as homework. Uh, these are just reading. So uh, in your notebook or if you have a book, you should be putting all the harakat, right? Aina, Zainabu. Here, fill a right? Like that. So, this will help you with uh, really, this is a very good exercise. If you can put all the harakats, not only you know your, your spellings, you all, first of all, not only you know how to read without harakat, you also know your spelling and you also know your grammar. So, where does the grammar come? Grammar comes as soon as you come. Al, uh, Alwara here. As soon as you come here, you think about grammar. And now you're thinking. I know right now you know two things, Dhamma and Orkasra. You're thinking Dhamma, Orkasra, Dhamma. Don't flip a coin and figure out whether it's going to be Dhamma or Kasra. It's going to be Dhamma because that's the default case. And I think the last thing that we talked about was uh, these peculiar words, right? Uh, this Mamnu uh, Minasaf, some words uh, <clears throat> that doesn't take Tanwin. So you have Muhammadun, Khalidun, Hamidun, but you have Aminatu, Zainabu, Fatimatu. Okay, even even some of them, for example, this one doesn't have Tamar Buta, but what's the rule? Rule is feminine, subhanAllah. Sometimes even I cannot read my handwriting. You know, worse than doctor. <laughs> Fem uh, by the way, I'm, it's, uh, my pen and paper handwriting is, trust me, a little bit better than this one. I'm writing on anyway. So feminine proper name, right? So what we say feminine proper name. These are all feminine proper name. Okay. And they like Zainab doesn't have Tamar Buddha, but they are feminine proper name. So you need to put uh, uh so it doesn't take Tanwin. Okay, just like Makkah. We talked about Makkah. It's a Makkah is a proper name of a city, but it's feminine, right? With Tamar Buddha doesn't take. Okay, so these things uh, will be coming. There are a lot of, lot of different sets of uh, words, but then inshallah book will introduce what to do with these words. It's not that it doesn't only take tam, uh, tamwin, okay, end of story, but they have a lot of other implication, uh, uh, implications in the Arabic grammar. So inshallah book will introduce as it goes. So here you just, you know, basically you should be practicing hamidun. So you're thinking, uh, you're a little bit confused. Uh, does it get... Um, Tanwin or not, right now the rules that you have, believe it or not, even some male names will not have Tanwin. If it if they consider it, there's a lot of rules anyway. Just right now, just think about if it's a uh, uh, if it's not feminine uh, proper name, you put Tanwin. Hamidun, Zainabu, Aminatu, Ammarun, Saidun, Fatimatu, Mariamu, Aliyun. Okay. Uh, by the way, do you need the uh, harakat for these things? Did they give you? Yeah, uh, all these words are here. That's what I told you. This book. So uh, that's why. Send me the number nine, number nine, number nine. Okay, I'll go back to number nine. So, <clears throat> but the only thing I'm, uh, I want to say that this book, if, if you feel like I don't know what's harakat, uh, <clears throat> this book will not remove the harakat until when 
they in introduce the word, they put the whole harakat. You, you understand what I'm saying? For example, Ali, they put the whole harakat here, and then later they will remove it. So they pretty much want you to uh, visualize these words. <coughs> number nine. This number nine? Ashams, this one? Oh, is there any other number nine? Yeah, there's other number nine. Or this one. Which one? Which one? Ashams, okay. By the way, do you guys know your Arabic number or are you just uh, going through a any, mini, mini, more, uh, one, two, three, four, and then because I'm kind of impressed uh, that, or are you just thinking this is number nine because it looks like, uh, <laughs> it looks like number nine in English, subhanAllah, <laughs> I don't know which one. Uh, just count, good, good. Okay, inshallah, numbers are coming. Here's one, uh, whether you call it secret or scary things or anything, Arabic numbers, when it comes dealing with not just writing, when one is dealing with the grammars and everything, one of the most complicated and difficult thing in Arabic language. This is mind boggling how complicated Arabic numbers are. Uh, so just heads up. That's why, you know, in, 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 in English, you know, in the kindergarten, they'll teach you one, two, three, four, five, eleven, thirteen, all of these things, right? Because that's the most basic thing. You gotta need to know how to count. Uh, and you'll see in the grammar book, they will bring the numbers as later as they possibly can, especially in the grammar book. So, yeah. uh, so uh, uh, Shams, okay, let's go here. So, uh, what are you gonna do here? Uh, this is what, first of all, this is a harfur shamsia, right? One of the for shamsia, shamsia. Uh, uh, so what's going to happen? It's going to be a shams. Uh, oh yeah, that's good. This is one way to find out Quran number. This is good. If you guys doing this, that's really good. I didn't realize it. But you were talking about this uh, number, uh, uh, you know, the figure numbers. But I'm talking about when you write in words and the grammars, especially the when to put the tanwin, uh, all of these things. Okay, good. But at least as long as you kind of get familiar with these numbers, it will help you. Inshallah, the book will teach you also. So, asham, what are you gonna do here? Sham, su, because, you know, that's a default. There's no reason for me to do anything else. So, uh, and why didn't I put Tanwin? Because I have Alif Ram. Same story, right? I'm repeating, uh, because I have five minutes to review and then we have to start our new topic, uh, which is continue this chapter anyway. Wal, and this is Kamar here, letter, guess what? Shams and Kamar, Wal, Kama, Ru, okay? So both of them are in the default state. Now, move, now we have Fisama. Okay, so what are you gonna do here? Huh? What are you gonna do here? Oh, you want the meaning, Fisama, okay. The meaning in Ish, as Shams is the sun. Okay, so it'd be uh, the sun. Do you say the sun or you just say sun, I don't know moon is in the summer is sky okay yes so the sun and the wall is end okay so you say uh, the sun and the moon phi is what what is phi phi is in in the sky okay make sense ashams will come and you know, if you're reading uh, Rahman, uh, you know, there's uh, Shams and Qamar. See a lot of those words, inshallah, and the Sama is all over the Quran, right? Fi is all over the Quran, Min is SubhanAllah. You know, so anyway. <clears throat> so, any other question from the previous things? If not, then inshallah, we can start our uh, new section. So, we finished this uh, uh, first section, and this is our second uh, section of the same chapter, right? We're still talking about. What we're still talking about? Al huruf, al huruful. Uh, sorry, I don't have to. This is I'm gonna. Uh, you can see al here. You see, huruful jar. You can say preposition. Okay. So how many preposition we know so far from the last chapter? Uh, it was ala, and it was fi. Okay, uh, it was fee. On, 
and in. In this section, they will teach you min and they will teach you ila. Min is from, ila is to. Please memorize this thing. Don't leave this class without knowing this for once. Okay, and last uh, last uh, section we learned two uh, two pronouns. Hua. Huh? What is hua? Hua is he. And again, he. Handwriting is looking really weird. So, okay. So hua is he or it. Okay, you can just I can write it. And we also learn what here which is she, also it, right? This much is clear, it's all news, right? We learned this from last uh, week. And here they will teach you, uh, I believe just only one of them, which is Anna, Anna is I, okay? So we have three pronouns we should be familiar with so far. Hua is he, here is she, Anna is I. Now, believe it or not, with this pronoun, you can even introduce yourself. Like you can say, Anna Muhammad, I'm Muhammad. Simple, somebody asks you, who are you? You know, he say, Anna Muhammad, right? Then uh, he is, uh, uh, he is Khalid, who are Khalid, okay? She is Fatima, he are Fatima, right? So these are your standard pronouns, okay? You need to know them. So let's see what's going on here. It says, Al-Baytu, you know what Al-Baytu means? Mean, okay, I have to explain something here. Min al bayti. Okay, we have kasra. Why do you have kasra? Because this is a preposition, preposition, and it means uh, from. So, what does this phrase mean? This is obviously it's not a sentence, it's a phrase. It means from the from the house. Okay, from the house. No. Okay, ah, subhanallah. Why did, okay, before I move forward, I have to explain something because the word is mean. Uh, word is mean, not mina. Word is mean. Why are they putting fata here? Okay, so something that I have to explain to you. In Arabic language, we have something called uh, two sukun not coming together. So in Arabic language, what happens, you cannot have two sukuns uh, next to each other, right? So the way the Arabs looks at it, they usually, this, uh, uh, it's a little bit, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'll explain what you need to know, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit extra information. Anyway, so this Hamzat al-Wasl, they really don't care about this Hamzat al-Wasl. They don't think it's even part of this word. The only thing they want to say, uh, uh, the sukun is here. The Hamzat al-Wasl doesn't start. This lam with sukun, sukun is what makes it uh, the da, the word da. You know, this is a little bit, you know, <laughs> excellent frame, but because you have to understand why the two sukun is meeting. But this, uh, you cannot, in Arabic language, you cannot pronounce with sukun in the first. In English, you can. Anybody can think about a word that starts with sukun? This one, school. School, right? This word, school starts with sukun, like, because, you know, you're starting with uh, uh, this whole thing. So, but in, in Arabic, you cannot, uh, you cannot do this. That's why if, if they have to, uh, transliterate uh, this word school into uh, into Arabic, they're not going to start with sin, school, they will do Hamzatul Wasal because uh, the uh, sin has a sukun. Uh, where's my writing? You understand? So the point, uh, uh, point what I'm trying to make here is that Lam has a sukun and the mean also had, has a sukun because the word is min, min is from. So Lam has a sukun, Mim has a sukun, and they look at these two words, their brains start to spark. You know, you will see, you write, you know, you, you want to scare some Arabs, <laughs> just put two sukun side by side, you will see, you know, the, some burn uh, smokes coming from their uh, ears. They cannot handle it. You know, it's too much for them. SubhanAllah. So what they do, huh? they just uh, um, put uh, one of them, uh, the, the first one, uh, they change it. They can change it to, there's many ways they change. They can change it to fatha. They can change it to kasra. They can change it to dhamma. Okay, how and which one they change is something for us right now. We just memorize. We just know. We don't have to worry too much about this thing. So, so we know when it's mean, they will change it to fatha. Okay, instead of so mean, 
because they cannot put a minimal bait, you know, it's very hard to pronounce. Even for us, every it's very hard to pronounce. They will just put fata just to make it easy. Minal bait. Instead of saying minal bait. Okay, it's uh, you understand? So just know that the word is min. If it has alif lam, then you will put a fata. If it doesn't have alif lam, for example, if you say min baitin from a house. By tin, well, I don't need to put anything here because uh, I don't have sukun here. The first one is what? First one is uh, is uh, uh, fata. Okay, something to keep in your mind. Okay, so uh, min means from. So the next one we have al masjidu ila, and here's our next uh, next uh, preposition. Ila is what? Ila is two. Al ilal masji, see where is nice dhamma and boom. We have ila and get to kasra. All business, right? All news, right? You understand? So basically, in this chapter uh, in, or in this section, they will just bring two more prepositions. Uh, the book is very slow when it introduces new concepts. So we have a mean and we have ila. Only thing we said the mean can change into mina if it has, if the word followed the, or that follows has alif lam. Okay? So what is mean means? Huh? Mean means from. What is ila means? Ila means to. Cool? Everything's good? Okay, so let's quickly uh, translate them and then uh, let's see what we can do. So we have al mudarris. Al mudarrisu, right? So al mudarrisu, that means mudarris is speaking. We have this uh, semicolon. So mudarris is saying, min, min. Aina, see, we have the sukun back. Why? Because this is not alif lam. We have a fatha already. So there's no sukun business going on, unlike here, right? So min is from, min aina. What is aina? Anybody remembers? We talked about aina. What is aina means? Huh? Guys, I'm trying to warm you guys up also. Wake up, wake up. Where? Yes, good. Min, uh, uh, so aina is where? So min Aina from where anta oh subhanallah I, I, I underestimated uh, this chapter they give you one more they give you one more pronoun huh what is anta anta is equal to you very good so you, you guys know four pronouns uh, you it's, it's, it's uh, almost there but uh, you so anta is you okay so you said uh, you male yes you male very good this male and female will uh, distinguish in the chapter six right now. <clears throat> the concept is not there in, from the book's perspective. We're just thinking like English, okay? Ante is you. Yeah, for the male. So, you know, just like, you know, I was just making a sentence, Ana Muhammad, and you can say Anta Khalid. Okay? You can still use those pronouns. So we have a uh, mean from Aina is where Anta is you. And now how would you translate this thing? You will say, it depends how you write in English. You know, you just have to think, now you have to know your English grammar. Where are you from? From where are you? I don't know, whichever, in our English grammar, you know, I am the last person you should be referring to. So that means anything you say, I'm happy, right? As long as you understand uh, what it's trying to, as long as you understand whether it's a sentence or not, that's what I'm, uh, I'm more interested in. Even if you make mistake, but you're telling me this is a sentence, but that's how I write in English. I don't like to write is, you know, that's your English teacher will deal with you. I'm, I'm fine uh, with that. Uh, yes, uh, no R, yes. So, so exactly, that's what I'm saying. So when you translate, you have to figure out your is and R, especially helping verb things, okay? So it is a sentence. Where are you from? I, I would translate this one. Where are you from although if you say from where are you i have zero problem i think it's fine from where are you from where are you you know this is fine for me i'm just telling you because i want you to understand uh, it's much better for rb class that you understand word for word right now so that everything makes sense instead of like going you know you bring the where first but the you know rb had, had the um, from first you know all these things going on Okay, so first try to uh, translate word for word, <clears throat> okay, and then see how would you say that in, in English, okay? <clears throat> so right away, don't look at min ein anta and just uh, later it's going to happen, right, in the beginning. You don't want to say from where are, uh, where are you from. 
<laughs> because your brain is not going to pick up the meaning of these words. But if you say, from where are you? Although it doesn't sound too good in English, but it flows with the Arabic. Make sense? Just don't tell your English teachers. That, that's what I'm uh, suggesting. <laughs> so, okay, so the next one is Anna. We just learned Anna. Anna is I, mean, same thing, but we have a Mina here, but we're going to find out. You already know why we have a Mina, but uh, it's same thing word from. I'm from what? Mean, uh, why we have Mina? Because we have Alifla. Okay, the things that I just explained. Uh, can you see my question? What is your question? What is this on Lam? I see Sukun and Wow. Okay. Which which line? Can you just uh oh yeah, first of all, are you talking about this one the Almudares or are you talking mean? You're talking about Almudares. Okay, 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 okay. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I, I was trying to help you guys. Looks like I confused you guys even more because the problem is I remember I don't know, in this class or some other class, uh, somebody had problem with this meme because this meme is very sneaky meme, right? This meme, uh, it, it would have been much better if somebody wrote it like that, right? So, uh, sorry, uh, then everything is uh, even, it's easier for me to put the harakat, right? Because the meme is here. So I say, al mudar re su. But the meme is here, so I have to put this down. What am I going to put? It's not my fault. I'll, I have to put this <laughs> meme because meme is here. I'll, okay. I'll move the is it clear enough? Because the, uh, the Dhamma goes for the meme. Clear? <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's how it write. Even I also write it like that because the meme and lam is very easy to write. You know, it's very easy. You just do beam. You know, you just make it uh, this wiggly thing and you have lam and meat. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay. So now we have Anna, mean, uh, Anna, mean, I'm from, so okay, Al Yaban. So what is Al Yaban? Al Yaban. It will be a country. What country does it sound like? Well, actually, anybody can guess. What country does it sound like? It's an it's, um, Ar Arabic version of the country. Al Yaban, Japan. Okay, Al Yaban is Japan. So Anna, Min, Anna Min Al Yaban. I am from Japan. So what's happening? The teacher's asking, Min Aina Anta, where are you from? And the Muhammad, he's replying, Anna Min Al Yaban, I am from Japan. Okay, so far good. Then teachers are asking, wa min aina? Wa, he's continuing because he's uh, asking someone else, wa means and. Wa min aina ammar? Ammarun. Remember what I said about ending? At the ending, you, can, you don't have to pronounce the last harakat. But for right now, because we're learning this language and we, wanna be, make sure, we want to make sure we know our grammars, that's why it's better for pron uh, pr uh, you know, pronouncing the whole thing, especially uh, when you're trying, right? I might uh, omit once in a while if I don't, if I'm not paying attention, right? So, Wamin Aina Ammarun. And what do you think it means? Wamin Aina Ammarun. Someone can quickly type the English so that I don't have to go through this uh, word by word because I did one of them word by word. I'm pretty sure uh, you should be able to. Uh, I'll put this one here so you can translate. Wamin Aina Ammarun. Wa is and. Min is from, right? Uh, Aina is where? Ammar is just a name. Ammar, right? So he's asking, and where is Ammar from? Or where, from, uh, and from where is Ammar? You know, however you want to say it, right? So same thing, exactly same sentence as this one. You can see it. Uh, it's the exactly same sentence as this one, right? So here it says Anta, you, and now he's asking about Ammar. And because he's talking about Ammar, third person singular, so we have to say he, wa. He is from, mean, again, we have a fatah because of Alif Lam, Asin. Anybody, come on, this one you guys should be able to translate. What is Asin? What country is Asin? China. Okay. Good so far? So what mean Aina Ammar? Uh, where is Ammar from? Hua Mina Sin. He is from China. Again, same thing. What mean Aina Hamid? And where is Hamid from? I don't have to translate, right? You understand because these two. 
where is Hamid from? Wa min al Hind. Hind. What is Hind? Huh? Hind is India. Okay, so you're getting a lot of the country names here, right? So we get Al Yaban, Japan, Asin, China, and Al Hind, India. Uh, if you, if, you know, the both the word China, he's from India. Yes, very good. Excellent. Uh, the Hind, these words, it's not, of course, not in the Quran, but these words are in the Hadith. You know, you will find this, uh, these country names in the Hadith. Aina uh, Abbas. Yes, so if I say mean, then it would be where are you from? Meaning like, mostly we're talking about where are you from, like in a country or location you're from, right? But you remove the I, uh, mean, then it's just any, just your standard from, uh, 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 sorry, standard where. So you say, Aina uh, Abbas, uh, where is Abbas? Simple as that. Just translate where, uh, where, uh, of course I need our helping word, Abbas. So here we're not obviously we're not asking where he's from, like originally. He's just asking where is he? I don't see him, right? Where where is Abbas? Here for the first time, subhanAllah, drum rolling, we're getting our first verb. Okay, and probably it's gonna stick with one or two for a long time. Uh, this is kharaja. Yes, kharaja is uh, outside good, but put it in the verb. And the believe it or not, uh, this is a past tense verb. And Here's a little interesting thing about Arabic verb. Every Arabic verb also has a, a, a pronoun built in it. So the default pronoun is hua, he. So this one word that you see, this one word that you see, it's a complete sentence. What is kharaja? We said kharaja is went out. I think I told you the last time. Right? So we, because uh, this is this is a past tense verb, so we are saying went, we didn't say he is going or who go, he goes outside, we're saying and, uh, went, and all the verb has a pronoun inside the verb. We're going to learn all of the verb in the next book, inshallah. In this book, I'm, they will talk a little bit more, but most of them will be uh, in the past tense, he, he format, like this format. I don't know if they will introduce more or not, but okay. So, kharaja is he went out this one word means he went out that's uh, how efficient uh, Arabic language can be you will see even one word can mean probably five different words okay maybe more sometimes so kharaja means he went out okay just keep that in mind it's a verb it means in the I can maybe write it down past tense verb uh, and the he pronoun okay is it clear? So he went out. That's uh, the whole, whole translation of this one word. Okay, now he's in, introduced, we are getting our second verb. Zahaba. Zahaba is also, you can look, you can kind of see the similar between the format between the Zahab and Kharaja. Zahaba is, what did we say about Zahaba? Huh? Is a past tense for go, so it's went. Okay, Zahab is went. And again, if I say, this is a, a verb and every verb has a, uh, this is a past tense verb and verb has a, a he pronoun built in it. So how would you translate? He went. Okay. So now looks, uh, look, our translation skill needs, uh, we need a little bit of our English translation skill here. Otherwise we probably cannot, uh, maybe we can, let me see if we can, uh, we can translate this one. Where, I know it's where, right? Uh, Zahaba is he went okay where he went I mean this is a slang way of saying it right I don't I'm not too sure <laughs> this is a proper English uh, phrase uh, or English sentence where he went maybe that's how we're gonna say somebody say but it should be where did he go right right that's your business not my business how you translate but the point is that's the question where did he go where he went Exactly, that's how we translate. But so, so see, that's what I was trying to explain to you from the beginning. A lot of times what happens is that, you know, these translations kicks us off. Like we kind of blame the Arabic language for because we don't have all the words that we can match, you know, do all this, you know, it's, uh, it's that's what it is. You know, it's just the translation. It's not the Arabic language. Arabic language is telling you exactly the whole thing in one word. He went, now how did, how do you translate this in English? You know, this is kind of like uh, 
we have to deal with in our own language, right? Jayid. Okay, so the next one is what? Zahaba ila al mudir. Okay. So we have the same verb, so we should be able to translate. Let me, you know, I, I, need, I need you guys to, you guys, uh, you guys to do something. Uh, uh, so al-mudir, I'm just going to say mudir. What is mudir means? I'm going to write it down. And you're going to translate. Even if, uh, even if one person translates, you should uh, translate as, as, well, as well, even if you agree with that person. Al-mudirun. Okay? Mudirun. Mudirun is, uh, uh, mudirun is, um, it could be a dean uh, or it could be a supervisor it depends on uh, you know like head headmaster all of these things it doesn't matter i don't know how well, do you know what how they translated this word in uh, in your dictionary it could be you know going to the principal going to the headmaster going to the dean all of these things can happen maybe principal i will, i can write principal and depends if you uh, if you are in work environment, mudi mudir man will be your manager. Okay, so this word will have different meanings where you are. In school, there is no manager, right? You have this headmaster or supervisor, you know, something like that. So, uh, in if you're working in in a company, you say he's uh, hua mudir. Uh, he he's uh, then you will mean he's a manager. Okay, Jayit, now translate this word for me. I'm going to be sitting and until uh, you, I see few translation. I'm not moving. Zahaba ilal mudiri. He went to, oh, that's okay. I thought I was gonna sip some coffee here and you know get a coffee break. He wrote it too fast. Ahsanti, good. So we have he went, the, this whole word is he went, and two is ila, right? And here is the right, and I just told you the movie is principal. There you go. So now you have all the meanings, right? And now you put them together how to make sense in english i'll leave it up to you he went to the principal Ahsanti. so same concept and where where did ali go right i don't have to translate this and then muhammad is replying mirhad we said a bathroom right or toilet right he went to the bathroom toilet so far so good you see you understand it's not complicated right so basically uh, i'll just tell you what they're focusing here they're focusing on two main uh, two um, uh, two pronouns, Anna and Anta. They're focusing on because who and here we've done this in the last section, and they're focusing on two new prepositions. Like how do you say from and to, right? So I I came from masjid, okay? Uh, or he went. For example, I, you will find this kind of sentence. I'm not going to give it to you because it's going to be here. Like for example, someone came. He came from the masjid and went. Or, or went to home or he came from home and you know you can combine these two to and from because you right now you know both of these preposition how to say to and from okay make sense any question from this text because your homework will be based on this text so hopefully you understand uh, all of these things right any any word that you are confused so we have three yeah three uh, country names al yaban which is japan right we have al sin which is china and al hind which is India. And to, something to keep in mind is mean or any other preposition or any other word that has sukun at the end and then alif lam right after it, you have to do something to connect them. Okay? The mean takes a fatha. Something might take kasra. We will see as time comes, right? So we'll say min al bait, not min al bait. We will say min al bait. Okay? And min al baiti, of course, when you uh, put the uh, pronounce the last letter. Good. So far, so good. Uh, so tamarin is the exercises. So same thing. Ajiban and Rasilat al Atiya. What we did last time. Last word meaning. Last word meaning. And uh, minha mirhad is this one, which is a bathroom. Bathroom. Bathroom toilet. Whatever. I still don't know the difference between these two words. Even in English, I don't know what's the difference. <laughs> Restroom, subhanAllah. Okay. Um, so now this, uh, maybe I'll just do one and then I'll leave the rest for you. Okay. So again, same story. They want you to answer from here. 
So they're kind of looking for the reading comprehension, right? So they're hoping that uh, you will go back to the text and this is really help, helpful. Even if you understand mean aina anta, okay. Well, maybe this is not, uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's combined. Some of them they're asking about you, some of them they're asking what happened in the book, right? So for example, the first two question is asking about you. Why? Because he's saying anta, it's not saying, uh, what's happening in the text. So min aina anta. Okay, so it depends where you're from. Okay, if I'm in Al Hind, and I'm in Pakistan, and I'm in Bangladesh, and I'm in America, and I'm in Canada, in Canada. Okay, so uh, whichever you can say, right? But you're just going to start from Ana Min. Okay, you can say Al Hind. Uh, Al Hind because the book has it if you don't know to depends on I don't know your country names uh, so that I can help you. Some of the country names even, there's a lot of country names. Some of them are just in, you know, English as it is, like Amrika. Some of them, they have Arabic word for it. Okay, for the Hind, you know, it's from, it's not India, it's Hind. So here, because of Alif Lam, you want to say Ana Minal Hind. And you have a question, right? So here is the question, A Anta, A Anta, Mina, what I'm putting fata because I have Alif Lam, Minal Philippine. Philippine is Philippine, right? So this is from Philippine. A anta Minal Philippine. Okay, now if you're from Philippine, you will say Naam, Naam. Remember word Naam. And you have to start with La or Naam because why? Because of the Hamza. Remember we talked about. So uh, if you have Hamza in a question, it always, your answer always needs what? It needs uh, uh, yes or no answer. So you have to start with a Naam or La. So these two, I think, is uh, you can answer from your own, uh, uh, and this is a good thing. If you're if you're one of those countries, you don't even know how to say it in Arabic. Guess what? This is the perfect time to go Google it or something and find out. Really, it's ima imagine uh, you don't know how to say uh, your own country in Arabic, right? So that's that should be a very good. So don't don't ignore it. And if you're from one of those countries that book mentioned, well, you're in good luck, right? Because you have the answers. Okay, so uh, you understand it's a kind of similar thing, but really it's, it's, the exercise is very good because it's building up something which is like you're, you're interchanging from the noun to pronoun and you're trying to make your own sentence from what you have, right? So don't uh, ignore this, okay? Please do this rest. If you have any question, inshallah, next time we can go. And then with Iqra Waktu Ma Dabti Awakhir Al Kalimat. So basically it's asking to read with the Ending of uh, ending sound. Uh, where is the ending? So you say al ghurfatu min al ghurfati. Okay, so I would want you to write everything. Al ghurfatu. So that means you know your uh, your spelling and also you know your uh, grammar. Min. So are you going to put a sukun here? No, because you have alif lam, right? So that's fine. Uh, you, you put min al uh, min al ghurfati. So here, here's your, this is that, you know, this is very interesting. You have this word that can be two things. It could be either mean or man. Now you see your, your context is very important here. Okay. Because initially it might not make sense because first of all, you have to know the next word also, right? Uh, uh, al -hammam. So what is hammam? Hammam, uh, did we get this word before? Right? Hammam is also bathroom. I can say hammam is equal to mirhad. Mirhab, which is bathroom, right? So now if you know the words, uh, hammam is a bathroom or toilet. So now the context will help you. Is it a mean or man? So what do you think, somebody? Mean or man? Mean, yes. Mean. And now, because of Alifa, we can have seen now. Hamab, me. That's it. Okay. So, any 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 confusion from number two? So, please uh, complete the rest. I get few. And same thing here. Uh, this one, you sh uh, not Iqra wa waktub. Read and write and tarjim and translate. That would be your main uh we're almost done. We're actually done. SubhanAllah. I, okay, maybe I can start with the next topic and then, okay. So this one, what you will do, I'll just do one of them. Uh, uh, 
maybe I'll do this one, number two, and then you can do the other ones. So first, the lot of challenge in here. You see the things are keeping up, you know, so we, we, it's piling up. Basically the book, I don't know, I just don't want you guys to feel too overwhelmed with the uh, harakat, I think. Are you guys feeling, uh, because this, if you had the harakat, I don't think it was too complicated, uh, but depends on how you feel about you know, reading without harakat, I feel it important because I'm thinking you guys taking Arabic seriously and you want to study as long as you can. If that's the case, you need to read without harakat. Okay. But in the beginning, of course, we all want to read Quran and I explained to you in the Quran, they will always put the harakat. So it's, I'm going to put one of them. And Kharaja uh, Al, here's the problem. Mudar Su Mi Nal Li because of min wa dhahaba ila ila mu di ri because of ila. Okay. So the first thing you do, whether you know the meaning or not, okay. First thing, uh, whether you can make up the whole meaning or not. See if you can put the ending first, the grammar first. Let's say you don't know what it is and you see this noun. Okay, I'm, I put Dhamma. Uh, here's a, you know, I see mean, I'm going to put Kasra and I'm Kasra. And obviously, if you know the words and you know its pronunciation, then you can put the Harakat. You know, after you've done all of this, which I just did, now you go back and you, see, you read it and you see if you can make any sense out of this. So Kharaja, Kharaja is he went out. He went out. Al Mudarris, the teacher okay here's a technique you have to understand i said the kharaja is he went out then i'm saying al mudarrisu so who went out kharaja mudarrisu when we say kharaja mudarrisu that means the mudarris is the who went out so even though we have the you know the pronoun he inside kharaja but we also have the noun right in front of us so we, we don't have to say the teacher, he went out. We don't have to translate it like that anymore. We can just say the teacher went out. You understand? The teacher went out from the fossil. What is fossil? Uh, this is a new word. Uh, you have to know fossil is classroom. Classroom. So teacher went out from the classroom. Wa and Zahaba. He hears. We don't have the teacher anymore. So you see he went Ila is to Al Mudir is the principal. Seriously, that's good. That's interesting. See that exactly. So some people see that's why we cannot, you know, blame the Arabic language because some language they will find exactly same thing as Arabic. So the translation will be very smooth, very easy, without any problem with the ease and all this thing. And English, you know, so that means it's not the Arabic language. Is that you know the in the comparability of the two languages, right? That's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, good. Uh, it's nice. Okay, so now you're translating. Kharaja, uh, he went out. Al Mudarrisu. So now you have to fix your translation again. Initially, you can do it, no problem. You say, he went out, the teacher, uh, from. Initially, that's what I actually want. You get, just write everything, uh, transla you know, translate word for word, write them down, and then fix your English grammar. Okay? So, but as long as you understand what the Arabic is saying, Kharaj al Mudarris, Mudarris went out, Min al Fasli, from the classroom, Wa Zahaba, and he went, Il al Mudir, and he went to the principal. See, big sentence, right? But if you break it down one by one, we know everything. We know Kharaj al Mudarris, Kharaj al Mudarris, Mudarris teacher went out, Min al Fasli, from the classroom, Wa Zahaba, and went to Il al Mudir. Now you glue them together and make your sentence. Okay. Uh, oh, whoa, subhanAllah, there's some three more. But uh, let me see. Exactly same thing. Nothing changed. It's just they're giving you more, uh, more, uh, more practice. That's all. Oh, this is nice. This is nice one. So let's see what it's saying. It's saying, da, da is to put, uh, put in the gap, what's coming, harful jar, munasiban. So basically put, appropriate munasib is appropriate put an appropriate harful jar remember what we said harful jar harf is a harful jar is a preposition huruful jar is the prepositions okay harful jar is preposition so we know our four harful jar 
de mim ira fi ala. So they want us to put appropriate preposition in the gap. So how do we know which one is appropriate? Well, we kind of have to play with our translation, right? And see how it works. So al-kitabu, the book, al-maktab, uh, the, the desk. Right now, let's say we, uh, we, leave, uh, we leave the grammar. The book, the desk. So obviously, ala, okay, subhanallah, ala, yes. So because now we know it should be ala. So is that, uh, do we have to reuse those? Yeah, we have to reuse those. Because there's a six or seven, uh, six of them, right? So we say the book ala on al-maktab. Now we know the preposition came here. Your brain is start pushing you to put that kasra. Okay, the book is on the desk. Let's just do one more. A talibu, what is a talib? The students. The student, the student. And then we have al fossil. Al fossil is what? What is false? The classroom. Okay, now what do you think is gonna do? Okay, so depends. So, okay, I have one answer is mean. Anybody else want to think? It, it, let's, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just, I just need a few more other, some of you giving me more uh, preposition. So the student, okay, I have mean, I have fee. Even if you agree with someone else, you can write just, you know, one. Okay, so I have mean and fee. So this is what you have to do also. It's what I'm going to do right now. Sometimes you pick one and then you put it inside and you translate, mm, maybe it, it's not making sense. Then you try another one, no problem. So let's, uh, let's put the first one, mean. So you say the student from the classroom. The student is from the classroom. In the context, it might make sense. The, you know, like grammatically, there's nothing wrong. You know, somebody asks me, where this student's coming from? He's coming from the classroom. It makes sense, right? You know, he's asking, is he coming from the classroom or he's coming from uh, Hammam or uh, Mirhab? Is he coming from the classroom or he's coming from, uh, you know, but it's still, it's probably not uh, the best meaning. So we would want to, the other one the sisters are uh, explaining is fee. Yes, fee is, let's try fee. Uh, uh, fee is, let's see. So the student is in the classroom. Yes, that's probably uh, complete. Okay, Jay. So let's see what we have here. Al madrasa tu. Al madrasa is school. Don't get confused with this one. Al mudarris, which is teacher. Okay. Al madrasa is school. Al mudarris is teacher. Al fasl is classroom. Right. You talk about this classroom. Al-Hammam is bathroom, Al-Mirhad, it's kind of similar, right? The Al-Madbakh is kitchen, I think we did this one last time, kitchen, right? Al-Ghurfa is room, I do have to write this, yes. kitchen. Al-Jami'a is university. Okay, Al-Suq is market. Again, I'm just uh, writing the meaning because uh, you see in Alif Lam that all of them should be, uh, what? All of them should be the. Al Yaban is Japan, Al Sin is China, Al Hind is Hind, Philippine is Philippine, and Al Mudir we say principal. Zahaba is he went, and Kharaj is he went out. Just make sure you know the difference. He went and he went out. So it's pretty much the opposite. Right? And here's your grammar. So what the book is saying is that fi ala min ila min. See, there he's using the mean to try. Mean is from from the preposition. When somebody says from the prepositions, what does it, what come to you comes to your mind? Is does it mean that these are the only preposition? No, it means like they are one of those prepositions. So here, mean can all also be translated as of of the preposition. So these are some of the prepositions. Okay, good. Makes sense. Yes, subhanAllah, we're done with the chapter four. Now, chapter, uh, any question from here? I have about 20 minutes. I'm going to start. Let's see how far we can go with that one. But uh, any question from here?
Okay, maybe uh, I'm going to review some of the concepts and let's see how far I can go. Uh, if we can start the topic, that's fine. But at least some of the grammars uh, we can review right now, right? So remember what we said, uh, uh, we have three different states, right? States, right? Uh, uh, it's something that I started talking about uh, the, in the other class uh, in more in details because the other book, they bring this topic uh, right up front, but this book doesn't bring it, so I don't feel like uh, talking too much about here, right? So basically, what we said it could be some. We have three states like ending, ending of the word. So this is just a uh, review. So let's see if we remember. So we said uh, marfu, right? Again, uh, I'm not too interested about the term in this class, which is basically you can think of dhamma for now. Okay, uh, right now th that's good enough. Then we have mansub, uh, mansub is a uh, fatha, right? Fatha. And then we have majroor, majroor is kasra. Okay, so we were trying to study uh, when uh, something gets where, right? So what we found out that we get kasra after, hmm? after preposition. This is good so far. And we found out uh, number one. Why do I put number first? SubhanAllah, my head is because in Arabic you write in one way, in English you write another way. Allahu Akbar. Number one. Uh, number one is here's uh, something that I want to, uh, I don't think we talked about like this in this class. It gets for the subject and also gets for the predicate. Okay, so basically, you know, when you say uh, uh, hada, uh, remember our hada? Baitun, what is it translate? This, let's, let's translate this thing in here in English, then you'll see, it's very simple. This is a house in English. This is what subject, right? Yes. House is what? Predicate. Make sense? Yes. Same thing in Arabic. Hada will be subject, and bait will be predicate. So both of them will be uh, will will have dhamma. Now some word cannot. Some word doesn't. It doesn't matter. The more kasra, like for example, hada, huwa, those things. You know, it's just a special word. There's no way you can put. They never change. Okay. So, for example, maybe this wasn't the best uh, example to give it to you guys. Uh, I want to give something from our book that we got. Just want to make sure you understand this properly from the book. Any sentence you guys uh, wanna? Oh, we did this one. Al ma'u baridun. Uh, you guys probably hiding, right? Because you don't you don't remember this meaning, right? Subhanallah. So al ma'u is the water. Yes. Barit is what? Anybody remembers what is barit? Cold. Okay. So al when you say the water is cold, the water is cold. Isn't the water subject, huh? And the cold is predicate. Guess what? Same thing here. It's a subject, and the cold is predicate. Again, I don't think I can start the whole topic today and go go through that. Yeah, good. Thanks. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just uh, you know some of this concept. Hopefully, it's review, and you know, uh, let's see what, what we can do. But look, both of them, both of them getting what? Both the subject and predicate is getting what? Dhamma. So that's our rule so we know two few things about case ending right now all of this time we read quran hadith you know we're just talking about sometimes allahu allah allahi you know kitabu kitabi what's going on so at least we know something we know if it's a subject it will have a dhamma so every time you say allahu in your mind you know the probably the word allah in this sentence is a subject Every one, every time you see Allahi in your brain, you're thinking maybe there is a preposition before it. 
or something else which we're gonna study uh, we're gonna start talking today inshallah next week so you're thinking for example adu ila Allah we 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 are calling ila ila is what preposition so here you're gonna say ila Allah who no you're gonna say ila Allah he you see so that means when you say the Allah he at the end you're thinking maybe there's a kasra I mean maybe there's a preposition so so we know two things about uh, about when to put dhamma when is subject and predicate and one thing when to put a uh, kasra which is after preposition right and uh just just we i think we discussed it this is just i'm just going to write it when in uh object i'll just write object something that is not going to come just because i don't feel like keeping it completely empty you know just giving him something you know uh, object when the word is object okay i saw muhammad you're not going to say muhammadun you're going to say muhammadan I ate, uh, I ate uh, bread, khubz, you're not going to say uh, khubzun, you're going to say khubzan. Okay, so this is something inshallah we'll study much, much later. Make sense? Okay. So the next topic, I'm just going to quickly uh, discuss and then inshallah next uh, week we're going to discuss full. Something called, uh, uh, I think it's possession. Yeah, sure. In, in, in English, but in Arabic term is idafa. Idafa, okay? Very important, one of the fundamental thing in Arabic language. The way the idafa is used in Arabic is not, in our, in English we have this concept idafa, like the, you know, when you have two words making into something else, right? We'll give you a lot of example, but it's not uh, to the extent that our uses uh, for this kind of composition, right? For example, in English, mostly we will be using for uh, the position. For example, we say, uh, Book of Muhammad. Hmm? Book of Muhammad, which is same thing as what? Muhammad's book. Yes? Isn't it? So the Book of Muhammad and Muhammad's book. Uh, this is a position in in uh, in Arabic, uh, sorry, in English, right? In Arabic, we call it idafa. Okay, so but something to keep in mind, in in uh, in Arabic, we don't have this one. The way of saying Muhammad's books, we don't have this. Like, we have this structure, Book of Muhammad. So, but it doesn't make any difference because both of them are same thing, right? You know, it's just that in English, you can say the same thing in two ways. In Arabic, we can just say it in one way. Big deal. That's the only thing. Even if the whole English didn't have the Muhammad's book, you could have said everything, every apostrophe S you could have converted into, uh, into um, uh, off, right? But in English, it's kind of sounds a mouthful sometimes. It's kind of big. Uh, but in Arabic, it's not. It's Arabic very simple. So we can just say, okay, so keep that in mind because it's fine. You, you want to translate book of Muhammad. Uh, let's say somebody give you something to translate in Arabic, uh, in a Muhammad's uh, house, Muhammad's house. Oh my goodness. You start crying because why? Because this doesn't exist in Arabic language. No, just convert Muhammad's house into house of Muhammad and then translate. Everything is fine. Makes sense guys. Yes. No, this one exists in okay. So that's what we're going to be studying. How to say something of some something or something of somebody. And by the way, another thing I want to explain to you. Um, the this idofa is um it's not only uh, in in even in English, but English we don't use that often. Uh, it's not only like we use for saying off sometimes. What happens? We have two two separate nouns. We combine them to make it into a brand new noun. It's like a chemistry, you know, you get sodium and chloride, and you combine, and then it becomes uh, sodium something that we I don't know we eat. But you separate them is completely two different things. How so? For example, hot dog. You know, <laughs> this is a uh, subhanallah, right? You, you separate them, one is hot, one is dog. No, no, we're not eating dog. That's a comp Once you separate, this becomes completely bizarre, right? You cannot separate them uh, because it's, it doesn't have to be, we usually put hot dog in the fridge. It doesn't have to be hot, nor it's a dog, right? But when you combine them, then it becomes a completely different word that we understand. Now we're cool. You can say hot, hot dog, you know? 
So this hat is not your adjective in hat, right? So that's what it is in in. So this is what's happening. This is this. Uh, this is like you combining two words uh, to make it one. Uh, like housework, you know, housemaker, homemaker, all of these things. In English, we have this. And we, when you combine it, it becomes completely different. Same thing in Arabic. Uh, we use the same concept uh, to combine two words. Okay, so I'm just giving you what is idafa because this word is your your nickname for next couple of weeks. Idafa, you know, idafa. Idafa, okay. Okay, 10 minutes, let's see how much we can say. At least we can give you one example and, and then we'll be, you know, dissecting, figuring out every piece and all the rules and whatnot next week. But right now, uh, I want you to feel a little bit comfortable of this thing. So when we say book of Muhammad or Muhammad's book, this whole thing is idafa in Arabic. So how do we say book of Muhammad? So in idafa, first thing you have to put in your mind that you have to deal with two nouns, two words. Noun in a, in a sense like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, two nouns. Just think of two nouns for right, right now, right? So we, we want to say, we want to say what? What do we want to say? We want to say book of Muhammad. So how many nouns we have? We have one and we have two. So first thing, obviously, let's find out what are the in Arabic words for this. So how do you say book in Arabic? Huh? Kitabun. Right? How do you say Muhammad? Muhammadun. Muhammadun. Now, just like in English, because remember, somebody asked you to translate uh, Muhammad's book. So the first thing you do is you convert this one into uh, this uh, way of this structure. Okay, yeah, if somebody give you English, uh, uh, Muhammad's pen, doesn't matter. Every time you see apostrophe S, you convert into what? The off. So you bring the book first and then off, then Muhammad. Okay, this much in English, I'm pretty sure we're all comfortable with doing that part, right? So make sure you do that first because it's going to help you there uh, uh, constructing the Arabic term for Arabic, uh, you know, phrase for it. Otherwise, you're going to be a lot of confusion. Okay, so this is step number one. Muhammad's book into book of Muhammad. So once we have constructed that, now we're thinking about the translation, just the word first. So we have we know the word Muhammad, we, we have it here. And we, we we want to know how to say a, a book, and we have it here. Off, and this whole off is the idafa. So we'll talk about off. How do we express the off in Arabic? This is what will be the whole discussion about the idafa. But right now, uh, right now we have the word. So now think about what's happening. So the book is first. So let's try the kitab first. Kitab, and let's not worry about the grammar right now, okay? Because remember, we said the grammar we. We cannot do anything about the grammar until we know the rule for the grammar. Okay, let's, we don't know anything about the rule, but let's see how we can arrange them. So book of Muhammad, we say Kitab Muhammad. Believe it or not, when you say Kitab Muhammad, every single Arab speaking or somebody who studied Arabic, without, without even hesitation in their mind, they know exactly what you're saying, book of Muhammad. Because, uh, if, you know, we are saying the ending just to clarify something. Even if we don't say ending, people understand. For example, I am keep on saying, Alal Maktab. Why do I say Alal, alal Maktab? You, you think if I say Alal Maktab, people are not going to understand this. Of course, they will understand. But what is that? Alal Maktabi. Okay, now if I am continuing, then I have to Alal Maktabi and everything. But from when he's speaking and everything, they will understand. Everybody understand, right? But we're talking about... How do you remove, uh, you know, what is the grammar? What goes here? And especially when you're writing a lot of these things, you have to clarify, you have to remove ambiguity. Sometimes that might exist. So right now, if you say Kitab Muhammad without uh, any uh, grammar, Kitab Muhammad, you know, you're just putting sukun in all of them in your mind. Kitab Muhammad. Just like, in, you know, remember I told you in English, everything has a sukun at the end. School, book, pen, and everything has a sukun. Why? Because, you know, the word doesn't carry the grammar. When you put all of this word, because in English, you have this, uh, uh, I have five minutes, I have to wrap up this thing. In English, you have uh, the structure, the word order dictates the grammar, right? The boy ate the apple. 
So you know the subject is always first and then, you know, it's everything dictated. That's why the word doesn't need the grammar. If so, that's why we have a sukun. But in Arabic, sometimes you can do a lot of things. That's why we need the grammar. But in a lot of cases, it's very clear uh, to the people. And I'll explain to you why in the next class. But right now, if it's a kitab, Muhammad, it is, uh, it is understood. You know, of course, you're not going to put sukun, but you're saying you're stopping. So what do we do here? Okay, that would be uh, our next topic. And inshallah, uh, I will uh, end it here. Uh, if you guys have any question, you can uh, ask me.